Hello, sweet friends. Um, I am back with the chapter 14 reading from Karen Cushman's The Midwife's Apprentice. Chapter 14 is called The Manor. Just before the road from the inn turns and makes for the village, there is a hidden path to the manor. Visitors use the main manor, visitors use the main manor road crossing through the gatehouse and past the apple trees and the stables. Some of the villagers know about the path, but few use it. For it passes too close to the dark woods. Alice, in her comings and goings through the village, had come upon the path, although she had never before had need to follow it all the way up to the manor. Until one afternoon, when golden yellow blossoms first appeared on the laburnum trees, and Girdle the cow gave birth to her first calf, a sweet and sticky thing. Alice thought to call it Rosebud, for she was as red as the hedge roses near the village church. Sounds like a cute name for a cow, Rosebud. As she watched Girdle nuzzle and suckle Rosebud and tuck her against her warm body to give the calf her warmth, Alice was filled with a sudden longing to go to the boy Edward at the manor and see for herself that he was there. Fed and dry and content, Mayhap he was unhappy and longing for her, and she would bring him back to the inn and take care of him as Girdle did Rosebud. The word mayhap means perhaps, okay? It's the same thing. For days she thought about this, and the more she thought, the writer it seemed. She imagined Edward's first sight of her at the manor. Alice, you have not forgot me, he would cry, throwing his arms around her waist. Have you come to take me away? I pray you have, for I am desolate here without you, and as well am starving and beaten, forced to sleep outside in the snow, and no one cares for me. She would scoop the boy and up in her arms, and they would go back together to the inn, and Alice would take care of Edward, and this would make her heart content. All she needed was Edward, and all would be well. She was certain of it. So one day when Jeanette had gone to the market fair at Edenwick to buy a copper pot, a young pig, and a bit of lace for her best kirtle, and no guest but Magister Reese cluttered the table, Alice put the cat in the stable so that he would not follow her, and, the sun warming her wintry spirit, climbed to the manor on its gray-green gray, hill. Passing the village fields, she saw Roger Mustard and Thomas the Stutterer swinging their weed hooks and felt the familiar feelings in her chest and throat, but turned her eyes away so she would not have to think about what she had had and what she had lost. So in other words, she's still really missing being in the town, even though a lot of the townspeople weren't very nice to her. She's missing her old life there. She's missing being a midwife's apprentice. The manor was bustling in the sunshine. She went first to the barn where the men were sharpening hoes and sickles in preparation for the summer hay cutting. The boy Edward, she asked a tall red-nosed man, the small boy who arrived after harvest to help with the threshing, is he still here? The man turned and looked at Alice. Forget this Edward curly top. My name is Matt and I am six times the man he is. Climb up here on this hay bale and give me a warm sticky kiss. My hair may be frizzled, but my wits are not, Alice responded. Save your sticky kisses for your wife or your cow. Alice left the barn and went next to the smithy, where the manor blacksmith and his apprentices were hammering lumps of iron into shoes for horses. The boy Edward, she asked again. Her answer was rude remarks, laughter, and kissing sounds from men too ill-tempered or too busy or too tired to care about the questions of a strange girl. The boy Edward? Alice asked the kitchen maid, skinning a pig in the manor yard, the laundress boiling great kettles of goose fat for soap, the carpenters fashioning a coffin for old Ned, who had died that morning. None answered. Corpus bones, said Alice. I might as well be asking the fence. Finally, she found her way to the shed that served as the manor kitchen, and there found a cook who, judging from the words pouring forth from her mouth with none to listen, would not be reluctant to talk to Alice. Please, ma'am, said Alice who had learned that mams and serves, or sirs, <laughs> served her well, even with cooks and stable boys when asking favors. So got that like extra level of politeness, she figures. Please, ma'am, the boy Edward, who came after harvest to help with the threshing, is he still here? Have you seen all of him? Ah, the lamb, the cook cooed, waving her ladle at Alice. The little lamb, he be here, but too small he is to be swinging that great heavy flail about or wrestling with the oxen and plows and the taunting of men. So I try to watch over him, the wee duckling, and find him simple tasks to do, suited for a small boy. The cook sat down, her face red from the heat and emotion and the boiling and the stewing going on about her, took off one great leather shoe and used it to fan her face. She peered closely at Alice. 
Surely then you be the sister he talks about, for you look just like him and could pass for twins. The cook muttered and crossed herself. You not be twins? She asked Alice, peering closer. I cannot abide twins. Oh no, ma'am, we be not even brother or sister. Uh, never say that, sweet pudding, for you are as alike as two peas. Just so, just so you are not twins. No, ma'am, not twins, Alice answered again, wondering why twin cows such as Baldred and Bilfrith should be such a joy and a boon while twin babies were ill-starred and unlucky. Well then, my little turnip, go find your brother in the hen house behind the barn where I sent him to gather eggs for a parsley omelet and bring yourselves back here for dinner of bread and bacon. Bacon. <laughs> I don't know where that bacon <laughs> bacon the cook wiped her wet red face on her skirt picked a struggling fly from the great pot of soup she was stirring and began a new conversation with herself for she found such talk interesting and hardly ever disagreed with what was said bacon <laughs> i hope you guys enjoyed that chapter i will be back with chapter 15 bye